In this video, we're going to review some basic properties of integrals. So let's say if we have this particular function. Let's say the antiderivative or the integral of f of x dx from 1 to 3. Let's say that it's equal to 5. So knowing that, what is the value of this particular expression? So notice we have a 2 in front. This would be the same as if we have a 2 between the integral symbol and f of x. It's just going to be 2 times 5, which is 10. Well, that was pretty straightforward. Now what about this example? Let's say if the numbers were reversed. Instead of 1 to 3, it's 3 to 1. What is the answer for this one? Now, this expression is equivalent to negative 1, 3, f of x dx. So therefore, it's negative 5. Now, what about this example? What is the antiderivative of f of x dx from 3 to 3? This is equivalent to f of 3 minus f of 3, which are the same, so they're going to cancel. This is going to be 0. Whenever these two are the same, the answer is always 0. Now what about, let's say we have a different problem. Let's say the integral of f of x dx from 2 to 3 is equal to 4 and the integral of f of x dx from 3 to 5 is equal to 7. If that's the case, what is the integral from 2 to 5? How can we figure this value? Now let's analyze it graphically. Let's say f of x is some function. And let's say this is 2, 3, and 5. This particular value represents the area of the shaded region between 2 and 3. So this region has an area of 4. Now this integral represents the area of the shaded region between 3 and 5, which has a value of 7. Now, this integral represents the area of the shaded region between 2 and 5. So it's the sum of 4 and 7, which is 11. Let's go back to that problem. Now, it's important for you to understand that the integration from 2 to 3 plus the integral of the function from 3 to 5 is equal to the integral from 2 to 5. Another way that can help you to understand it is to realize what these values represent. The integration from 2 to 3 is basically the same as f of 3 minus f of 2. It's the net change of the integral function. The integral of f of x dx from 3 to 5 is the same as f of 5 minus f of 3. So notice that these two, they cancel. One is positive and the other is negative. And this expression is equal to f of 5 minus f of 2. These two values are positive and these two values are negative. As you can see, the left side is the same as the right side. Now, given these two values, evaluate this expression, the integral from 5 to 3, f of x dx, minus the integral 3 to 2, f of x dx. Now, if 3 to 5 represents 7, 5 to 3 will be negative 7. And if 2 to 3 gives us a value of 4, 3 to 2 is going to be negative 4. So this is the same as negative 7 plus 4 
which is equal to negative 3. Let's say that the integral of g of x dx is equal to negative 8, and the integral of gx from 3 to 9 is equal to 5. What is the value of the integration of g of x from 6 to 9? So first, write an expression that relates all of these three integrals to each other. You need to realize that the total is from 3 to 9. 3 to 6 plus the interval from 6 to 9 must add up to 3 to 9. Realizing that, we can write an equation. The integration from 3 to 6 plus the area from 6 to 9 must equal the area from 3 to 9. That represents the total area in the interval 3 to 9. So from 3 to 6, the value is negative 8. We're looking for this value. Let's call it x. 3 to 9 is 5, so we're solving for x. To do that, we need to add 8 to both sides. So the missing side is 5 plus 8, or th which is 13. So that's the answer to the problem. Let's try a few more examples. Let's say that the antiderivative from 1 to 4, f of x dx, is negative 9. And from, let's say, 7 to 9, f of x dx is equal to negative 6. Go ahead and evaluate this expression. Negative 3 times the integration from 7 to 4, f of x dx. So using the information given to you on the top, go ahead and find a value of this expression. So first, let's write a relationship or an equation. The area of the function from 1 to 4 plus the area of the function from 4 to 7 has to equal the area of the function from 1 to 7. So this we know to be true. So from 1 to 4, the value is negative 9. We need to find this one, so let's call it x. And from 1 to 7, it's negative 6. So to solve for x, we need to add 9 to both sides. So x is equal to negative 6 plus 9, which is positive 3. So now we know that the integration from 4 to 7 for f of x dx is equal to positive 3. And it makes sense. Negative 9 plus 3 adds up to the total of negative 6. So therefore, the integration from 7 to 4 must be negative 3. And if we multiply it by negative 3, then this is going to equal positive 9. So this is the answer. Let's say that the integral from 5 to 2, f of x dx, is equal to 8. And also the integral from negative 1 to 5, f of x dx, is equal to 12. So given this information, find the value of this expression 5 times the integral from 2 to negative 1, f of x dx. So let's make it an interval. The lowest x value that we see is negative 1, and the highest is 5, and the middle value is 2. So the first value, going from left to right, must be from negative 1 to 2. So the integral from negative 1 to 2, f of x dx, plus the second part, the integral from 2 to 5, f of x dx, must equal the total from negative 1 to 5, f of x dx. So we have the total. This particular value is 12. Now, we don't have 2 to 5. We have 5 to 2. If from 5 to 2 is 8, then 2 to 5 must be negative 8. 
So we need to find this particular value. So we need to add 8 to both sides. 12 plus 8 is 20. So x is 20. So the integral from negative 1 to 2, f of x dx, is equal to 20. So with that information, we can now find the value of this expression. So from negative 1 to 2, it's 20. So from 2 to 1, it must be negative 20. Times 5, this is going to be negative 100. So that's the answer.